life. 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 What is real anymore? It's time to pull back the curtains of reality and explore life in the hologram. The hologram. The hologram. We've unlocked our library hidden deep within the matrix and are ready to take you on a tour of the cosmos. cosmos. Come in as we discuss everything from spirituality, spirituality. Psychics. psychics, healers, healers. Ghosts. ghosts, as well as UFOs, as well as UFOs. And, the unknown. and the unknown. It's time to forget what you think you know and explore life in the hologram in the hologram in the hologram in the hologram good morning good afternoon good evening it's a good something somewhere in the universe and welcome to life in the hologram on revolution radio network and this is madeline rudy and we have caroline del tumblety and we're going to have a great show tonight on 1-17-2024. And I have a little card here that I'm going to read. Everyday magic. Cultivate magic in the mundane. Daily spirituality and mindfulness. So, listeners, we are listener supported. So, don't forget to donate a couple of dollars to the station so you can keep listening to us every week. And we're on Wednesday now, February 2nd. We're going to move to Friday night at 7 o'clock. Right, Caroline? That's right, Madeline. And I liked your <laughs> card. So we're going to have a magical show, right? We are. We got the card for it. And we've got mm-hmm. a wonderful guest lined up. And I'm going to read them. Um, Maria Martinez. Martinez. Get it right, Caroline. Okay. Is a human potential activator, well consciousness activator, medical support clinical hypnotherapist, medical intuitive, quantum energy alchemist, author, speaker, TV podcast, and radio host. Maria Martinez is a human potential activator. Well consciousness activator, multidimensional healer, quantum energy alchemist, light language channel, medical intuitive business success coach and speaker. She supports you in identifying your gifts and talents, discovering your life purpose, assessing your full potential and achieving happiness, joy, fulfillment and prosperity. And welcome, Maria. And I'm sorry that I got your name, the pronunciation. Thank well, you, thank you. Um, My pleasure to be here by both of you. <laughs> absolutely. That it was usually me, Caroline, that I bumbled, bumbled up everybody's name. <laughs> <laughs> it's my turn now. <laughs> I apologize. Yeah, Maria, it sounds like you've had an exciting career so far. How did you get started in all this? Oh, it's been wonderful. I actually remember doing this work at the age of five, six years old. So I've been doing this work for a very, very long time. Um, with the guidance of my angels and my guides, I've worked with spirits, uh, freeing them from attachments and entanglements and restoring them back to the physical body and back to freedom and joy. So that was my very early on work working with my guides and they were my initial mentors and then it evolved into other work um, and more in the physical so working with people versus initially working with spirit and the spirit of the individual Um, and it evolved into many things as I was guided to support people in different areas and my uh, my intention especially when I stepped into it which was in 2014 when I decided okay it's time for me to really step into this as my full expression. I had, you know, I went to college, I went uh, to corporate America, uh, I was in different jobs, all where I felt like I could serve and contribute in a way. And then when it didn't feel in alignment, that's when I started looking for what is my real true purpose? What am I here to do? And what really makes me happy? What truly makes me happy? And I kept coming back to my nature, which was working with energy, working with spirit, uh, working with manifestation, 
and empowering others to really own their gifts and their talents and to start moving into their authority and create for themselves. So it's been a wonderful journey and it's been lovely to see the transformation of many people as they step into and access their gifts and their potential and create and really embody who they are, their worth, uh, and their value and their power. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So you went to corporate America and you didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it wasn't that I didn't like it. it. I felt like because people ask me about purpose, right? And I feel like we, as we go through different stages in our lives, we connect to a purpose. Like when I was in college, my purpose was to get my degree. When then it was, what am I going to do with this? What's the purpose of getting this degree? And then it was, oh, well, you get a job and then you become successful. It served a purpose. But when I felt like I wasn't contributing, that's when I felt like, okay, it's time for something different. It's time to really find something that really, you know, really I, it connects to my heart. So I was in the pharmaceutical industry and I felt like I was really making a difference in terms of education with patients and all of that. And of course, the industry changed. So we weren't allowed to speak to the patients. We weren't allowed to speak to the staff. We weren't allowed to speak to the doctors. So there was really nothing that I felt like I could do to continue to serve in the world that I felt fulfilled. And of course, the reason why I chose that. Uh, so once I moved out of that industry, I looked for other ways of serving and I became a consultant. So I helped people with startups. I worked in the technology field and real estate, and that also gave me a sense of fulfillment. So, you know, my purpose was to help people, you know, create something that is sustainable and has longevity and it creates revenue and, you know, it fulfills their lives. But it wasn't completely fulfilling because I still had this aspect of myself, which was the spiritual, the energy, yeah, you know, the connection with source that wasn't being fulfilled. And that's when I started to look at how can I you know, express all parts of myself and, and be in alignment with all that I am and, and can share with others and also contribute to others in different areas of their life. So I started working with people in business um, and activating their gifts and then monetizing their gifts, you know, creating courses or creating processes so that they can serve others. Um, as well as uh, branding and messaging, and then the health. So that's where my company came from, 360 Prosperity, which is, you know, every of your life, we want to up-level. We want to up-level who we are because we're universe, right? We are that center of our universe. And if we, if our cup is overflowing, if we're in alignment with who we are, if we're embodying our gifts and our talents and our value and our abundance, then that is overflowing to every other area of our life. We are showing better or as the best version of ourselves with our family. Uh, we're present. We're contributing to them. We're bringing out the best out of them as well as with our clients. You know, and, and we're accessing higher knowledge uh, for to create the space for our clients to also access their own breakthroughs and access more of themselves. We have better connection with ourselves, our higher selves. Uh, we have peace within our So, you know, the, as I continue to work, as I continue to uh, myself, even continue my personal development and continue to bring what I was doing for myself into how I was serving others, it really brought me to this, this place of human potential. Because we're, you know, we live a life of being limited or we, we felt that it was only a certain way we can have only so much. So uh, throughout my journey and throughout working with my clients, we began to push those limits. We began to release those belief systems and really begin to focus on our ultimate self and our ultimate potential, which is having it all. And having all means great health or perfect health, abundance, prosperity, freedom, joy, happiness, amazing relationships, deep connections with others, and then serving and creating a powerful impact. Mm. Well, now, which classes or did you follow first when you got onto the spiritual journey? I did a lot of, uh, well, I, 
because I had a lot of mentors on the spiritual side, uh, a lot of my gifts were being activated. So I, I started to access some of that for my own personal development. I also did NP, hypnotherapy. Um, I also did a lot of energy work. Um, I traveled to other countries to do, you know, to do cis and learn processes, alchemy uh, around energy, um, healing. So throughout, you know, I just kind of follow where, where I was being guided and also what I needed for myself, you know, healing myself, healing my money story and, um, limitations that I felt were around me that were keeping me from really showing up in the way that I could. Mm, interesting. It is. I like the name of your um, company, Prosperity 360. Kind of covers yeah. it all, doesn't it? Like the name. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really good name. Yeah. I truly really believe that we can have it all. Mm-hmm. And when we start from that place of having it all, then we can begin to embody and access the abundance with, that's already within us, which is the universe, right? It's universal abundance, universal prosperity, universal joy and happiness and compassion, universal healing. Mm-hmm. When we can be in that place or start from that place, then whatever's going on in our life doesn't feel so overwhelming, doesn't feel so difficult or challenging. And what's, you know, we're, Making it smaller, we're expanding who we are because we're com- we're coming from source or from mm-hmm. that place of source, and everything else is just an opportunity. Whatever is happening in our life or whatever we feel showing up as a challenge is it's really an opportunity for us to access what's already there. We it, in, and when things show up, it's because we're ready and because we've chosen at this point in time to complete or to heal or, or to yeah, transform that relationship. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, you know, I find it interesting, like, um, how we all kind of begin, like, our journeys. Like, a lot of us have, like, similar things that we begin to resonate with. Like, I can relate to yours, Maria, with a hip therapy mm-hmm. and NLP. Mm-hmm. That was... um. That was where I kind of started, like over, mm-hmm. oh, maybe 35 years ago. And you too, Madeline, you went into the hypnotherapy. and. Well, I started with massage. Massage. Mm-hmm. And then it went to Reiki. Mm-hmm. And then it mm-hmm. went to <laughs> hypnotherapy. And mm-hmm. then it went to this. And then it went to that, and mm-hmm. I I was over and uh, I went to Thailand too, and went to you know all around Hawaii, the whole nine yards to do spiritual work. Very mm-hmm. cool, very very cool. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, I feel like I feel like whatever we're guided to do is things that we already have within us. It's our mm-hmm. ancient wisdom that it wants to be awakened. You know, the path of an E, the path of hypnotherapy, the, the path of uh, hands on, you know, healing, the path mm-hmm. of uh, parrot astrology, all of that, you know, all of that part of my repertoire. But I feel like when we're called, it's really you're just accessing another layer mm-hmm. of your own wisdom and, and you're and it's coming into shape and form uh, as part of the, you know, as part of the foundation that you're continuously building. That is the foundation of your body of work mm-hmm. uh, and in the space that you create for others. Yeah. I, I love the blend of all these things. And it, it's so beautiful to be able to be in front of a client and they have a question and just tune in. OK, so I'm just going to pull a card or let's look at, at your chart or uh, let's look at one of your past lives. So it's mm-hmm. just so beautiful to be able to access all this information or let's look at your acacia records uh, to to just be for information, for divine knowledge, for ancient wisdom, and be able to sit in front of somebody and just serve them like, in the highest way possible. Because you, you know, we can think about it as what accumulated all these modalities, but in reality, they are part of what what is already who we are. They're the wisdom that we brought in from different lifetimes that now 
it's being activated and coming through us so that we can create that beautiful space, that beautiful healing chamber, sanctuary for our clients to step into and have the most amazing experience and receive whatever they need in that moment. Hmm. I like that. The, it's like we have this, um, it's like a resonance that starts to happen within you and you, um, you just start to be attracted to certain things and it's like you build upon it. And I, I agree. That it's, it's like a remembering, mm-hmm. you know, and waking up these, um, these abilities. Like, I know that when I began, like, I, um, I didn't know that that's what I was doing, but like when I look, like when I hear what you just described as well, Madeline, like it's almost like we have this toolbox that we need to fill. Well, yeah, I like for me, I really didn't start on it till my son had a bad car accident where he almost died. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, you know, I made some promises. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, after that, like things opened up to, uh, I guess what I was supposed to do. How long ago was that, Madeline? Mm-hmm. Oh, let's see. He was 16 and he's now 55. <laughs> wow. Wow. So almost no, 40 he was, years. He was 15. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So 40 years. Wow. So quite a journey. Absolutely. And I love it. I love the way that you describe it, uh, Maria, that if you have, when you have a client in front of you, you have somebody that um, you're working with and it's um, like accessing like a card or the Akashic records, you know, it's like tuning in to the individual and knowing um, exactly what it is that you um what you need in order to resonate with your client. Well, you're a medical mm-hmm. intuitive, aren't you? Also. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Now, how did that come to be? That uh, kind of evolved on itself as well when I was very young, uh, because that's when I started to see energy and feel energy. And I started doing a lot of the healing at the beginning. It, it, I dream and it was my grandmother and it was a, uh, after she had passed away and she took me to this beautiful place. It was like in the middle of nowhere and we were in a little cabin and right outside the cabin, we had different herbs mm-hmm. or she had growing different herbs. So this, I mean, this was in the astral plane. And I remember her walking me through all the different herbs that were there and telling me, teaching me about them. Mm-hmm. And this happened. It was like a, a dream that happened. It wasn't all the time, but it happened quite a bit and it was always different herbs. And so that kind of became part of what was where I took the different, um, you know, home remedies. Mm-hmm. Um, I would make recommendations to people uh, because of the information that was coming through. So that was one aspect of medical intuition. The other part is you know, I've been able to read energy again as long as I can remember. So looking at somebody's body the way initially started going up was like a heaviness or a difference in color and then i would tune into that and then it would give me more information whether it was um, an, an emotional statement um, or an emotion that was locked into that area or it was a trauma that was there that was creating the physical symptoms or ailments mm-hmm. and then after that I, I was also taught to release them um, one was by having them breathe and then allowing that breath to bring energy to that area. And as they exhale, they move that of their body. Now there's uh, many other ways that I, you know, that I do that, but that's how initially, uh, I started to get information. Um, it would just show up, the other person would show up and I'd be guided to a certain part of their body. And then it would have a, a difference in color. And then we'd look into the color and then we'd get information. And then we'd go through the layers of that to discover if it was energetic or if it was physical or if it was uh, spiritual. Uh, and, and then we work through that. 
through that process. Um, and then to fine tune that I did, you know, do other um, training um, that just supported uh, this process um, of moving. And a lot of this was on my own, just tuning into the individual and asking questions, asking the body questions. Mm -hmm. When, I, you know, everything is consciousness. The body is consciousness. It's, a, it's intelligence. So when you can connect to the consciousness, when you can connect to the intelligence of the body, you get a lot of information. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when, when I sit with my clients or when I'm teaching about energy work or medical intuition, that's what we do. We sit with the body or we connect to the body and we begin to move through every organ in the body. Sometimes we segment into organ systems or sometimes we just move from the top of the head all the way down and we look at, at the color and we look at the emotions and we, like, we ask the body, what is this about? And we get a lot of information because we're tuning into the consciousness, we're tuning into the intelligence. And then a lot of it is resolved through energy work. Sometimes it's you know, some, some other is recommended, whether it's um, rest and relaxation or going out in nature or doing some self love work, self healing uh, work, or even drinking more water or take supplements. Oh. So, yeah, do you, um, is it a lot of in person? work you do do you do work online do you prefer to work with an individual or a group i do both i work one-on-one -on -one and most of the, my work is online i have clients internationally or from australia europe india africa uh, asia so they're all over mm -hmm. and I, I feel like sometimes that works better than in person mm -hmm. because when you're not in front of someone and I'm talking about usually clients, the client doesn't feel self-conscious or they don't feel like somebody's looking at them. They can just close their eyes, be in their own space in the comfort of their own home and just relax. Mm -hmm. And when, so they were not overthinking and when they're not trying to analyze the process, we can go deeper into the body as well as deeper into the unconscious mind. And we, again, the process feels like it goes a lot smoother because a lot of information just begins to flow. Would and you with, say that a lot of things with the body are caused by trauma? Uh, a lot of, uh, I would say that um, a lot are caused by trauma in the trauma in different variations, right? It could be mm -hmm. physical trauma, emotional trauma, sexual trauma, um, different types of trauma um, and things that we interpret as trauma from our childhood like being abandoned, being rejected, not being accepted. You know, we interpret that as trauma. You know, it has many levels of it. Um, but there are things that we've locked into the body. We've locked into the different areas, whether it's in our heart, whether it's in our digestive liver, you know, kidney area, or whether it's in our bloodstream and it's just circulating through our bloodstream. Mm -hmm. And it shows up and as an imbalance and it shows up as density or shows up as just kind of this uh, star energy that feels destructive. So we want to bring love and compassion to it. And we want to really accept what was so that we can move on, uh, not judge it, not avoid it, not suppress it. It's just that's what, what, what happened. That was the event and not mm -hmm. feel so attached to the event, but more look at it as how we related to the event during that time, especially from our childhood years, where we're like sponges and we're looking at the world and we're learning from our parents and we're learning from others around. We're not living our lives. We're seeing that world from everybody else's perception. And it could be confusing, but you know, we make up stories about what happened or we make up stories of what it should be or what it should have been. And mm -hmm. those stories we make up us from truly living our potential because they create judgment, they create shame, they create blame, they create resentment, they create guilt, they create not good and they create unworthiness and underservingness. Mm -hmm. So the stories that we tell ourselves, we want to change them if our lives are not going in the direction that we want it to go in. <laughs> yeah. You are. <laughs> you are Rockefeller's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Is that who I am? Money is not an issue. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
Uh-uh. No one used the word, like, Prosperity 360. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. You know, we, everything around us is information. And we take that information and we make something of it. Sometimes it's a story. It's a story that we're not good enough. It's a story that it, we're invisible. It's a story that we have to play small because it's unsafe to be ourselves. It's the story of, uh, you know, I'm not gifted like others or I don't have value like others. So it's just, these are different stories and belief systems that we take on as, and we make them our truth. Mm-hmm. So when we begin to unravel all of that and we went, we, we begin to come back to the source of who we are, which is, Everything is available to us and we're perfect, divinely perfect, and we're beautiful and we're amazing and we're brilliant and we're radiant and we're abundant and we're prosperous. Then having to prove ourselves is not that important anymore. Mm -hmm. Having to meet somebody else's expectations is not that important anymore because we begin to live for ourselves. We begin to reconnect to our joy or our happiness and what matters to us. We begin to live our own life. Wow, what a novel idea, living your own life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> I'm ready. You know, this is a new year. You know? so, Absolutely, it's perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. It is. Uh, like, see, when you describe them um, seeing your son after that um, car accident, Adeline, that's trauma, you know, for you and for him. I found him. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's trauma. That's yeah. like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, he was like right at the bottom of the, the driveway, and the car was overturned, and the car had rested on a rock, and he was underneath between the rock and the car. My goodness. Yeah. And they're, you know, people, you got to get away. I said, I'm not getting away. Just let me go. So I prayed and I prayed and it's like, well, you know, if you only let me heal one person, let it be Sean and let it be now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and he did, right? Well, did. it took a while. But I thought mm-hmm. it would be instantaneous, but it wasn't. <laughs> yep. Exciting times. Devious times. Yeah. 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 Like, how would you like it going forward, Madeline? You know, like. What do you What do you want? What do you see? What do I see? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For yourself, like, what do you? What would you like? Well, I'd like to live in a cruise ship. <laughs> that sounds lovely. <laughs> sounds amazing. <laughs> you want and to where join would me? You, yeah, yeah. Where I would definitely join you for part of the trip. Yep. <laughs> where would you be going? Everywhere. So it would be a world cruise. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, there's people that do live on cruise ships, yeah, you know yeah, that. Yeah, there is. And they, they have your role there. You know, they will stay yeah. there until the end. Just shove them off board. Uh, shove them off board. <laughs> I don't think they do that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Take me on a cruise after I kick the bucket, and then, you know, I could be fish food. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. There she goes. No, I said put my li- put my ashes in a little bottle with a message. Throw it in the, you know, ocean and see where it lands. I like the idea of being shot in any space. Yeah, that too. Right. Yeah. yeah. Let's start that business. <laughs> yeah. How did we do that? <laughs> <laughs> I think we need a rocket ship. <laughs> Could probably make a deal, right? <laughs> you gotta call Elon Musk. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, that took a funny turn. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So I had saw on your YouTube channel, Maria, that you have something coming up on. Is it January the twenty second? I guess I I had an opportunity to interview twenty. Really wonderful people have uh, the message of living, you know, living in alignment with who you are, seeing happiness, living unapologetically. Uh, and I had the opportunity to them on how they got there, the challenges that they experienced, and 
the pivot points, you know, the power decisions that they to step into you know, powerfully in are and how they're from that place serving others. So it's coming up uh, on the 22nd. The episodes will go live. So it was it just, that was beautiful and it was an honor to interview everyone at a long, in, in that theme, especially around this time of year when we are all looking for what's next. Mm-hmm. So, what am I we missed and part. Of, there Marie, are a lot we of, missed part of that because you're breaking up a little bit. Yeah, and you said you were going to interview who? I I interview about twenty different speakers oh. in the areas of happiness, happiness and um, health and success, in which they share their story, their pivot point how they arrived to being of service and how they're now serving others through their experience and making that powerful choice of being fully expressed and in alignment with their mission. And it's a wonderful, oh. yeah, very wonderful, wonderful uh, project that mm-hmm. I have the opportunity to be involved with. And it's been live the 22nd and everyone had a chance to share steps strategies, tools, even processes um, to help everybody step into the new year. Oh, to wonderful. To support them in mm-hmm. choosing what's next. Yes. That was, so that was really the intention. You pre-recorded, like you you interviewed different people and it was a, you pre-recorded it and you're going to put it up on YouTube. Is that, did I get that right? That sounds really cool. Yeah. And Well, you run it like an episode at a time or is it like one so we're running it we're running it for five days and mm-hmm. we had 20 speakers so we're doing four a day mm. oh, oh I, might, I need to look out for that so we, yeah it was it, i wanted to make sure that we kept the energy you know throughout the week and it felt like making it available in one week would be really powerful for everybody to choose where they wanted to go who they wanted to listen versus waiting weeks since we had 20 different speakers versus waiting 20 days uh, for their speaker to uh, to go live, for their episode to go live. Well, I guess most of it is, and I guess there's some of us that don't do this, like put a blueprint together of step by step of how you're go- going to accomplish these little goals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, and the intention of the summit was was to support others in designing what's next for them, mm. right? Choosing, first of all, getting clear about what they want and aligning with the new vision of what is next and new, that what they want to bring in, and then be guided into energetically, emotionally, mentally aligning with that next version of themselves to resonate, to raise their vibration, to match what they desire, and then use the tools whether they're, you know, practical tools that they can implement or energetic tools, mindfulness tools, self personal development tools to continue on this path of creation and manifestation and up leveling their life. Yeah. I think one of the tools is to get rid of stinking thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Trusting, right? <laughs> I think that's 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 the key. <laughs> Get rid of that stinking thinking. The, what is one of the um? What would you say is one of the biggest damn obstacles for people like um to actually actualize like um the potential? Oh yeah. Uh, well, the big the one of the biggest ones that I see is not believing, not trusting mm. in themselves. Not so. There's a separation. This is what I noticed that there's separation. There's a gap between their authentic self, their higher self, their light, their divine self, and the person. And that gap is that not believing in themselves, not trusting themselves, um, not knowing that they're enough. So closing that gap and getting through what's in that gap, and that that's where we can find trauma. We can find old stories, old belief systems. Uh, we can find old perspectives, uh, old fears, or even stuff from other lifetimes in that gap. But going through that gap allows them to move into that flow, 
move into surrender, move into radical trust and align with their full potential. You know, there's other things that we do, obviously, with NLP, meditation, hypnosis, to work with the mind, to allow the mind, you know, we want to unlock the mind. We want to allow the mind to re, like get reorganized, become reorganized, where they can differentiate and discern between the ego, between their higher self, between their conscious self, and then work with them like a team so that the ego is not getting in the, in the way so that other parts of them, sub personalities are not getting in the way of creating. So it becomes sort of this beautiful, happy family. We move into wholeness and we can be aware of our parts and how they play. And we can continuously integrate and bring it, invite them in, invite them in the journey until they're not really interfering anymore. They're no longer resisting because now they feel safe. Now they feel part of, now they feel like they don't have any responsibility. Like often when we work with their inner child, sometimes their inner child feels well. They feel like, can't, can't do this. I don't know how this is, feels scary. This is, feels unsafe. So when we can see that part of ourselves and work with that part of ourselves and heal that part of ourselves and invite the part of ourselves in and remove all the responsibilities of the adult from the child that are in our child, then we can make significant progress. And we invite everybody to come in and, you know, be part of the family and, and feel integrated and accepted and welcomed and loved, then those parts are not resisting anymore. Or the victim, you know, when the victim doesn't like what she sees or, you know, she feels like she doesn't have any power in the situation, she'll resist, she'll blame, she'll, you know, play small, she'll sabotage. So we want also to impact ourselves and then look at what is actually triggering. What is the trigger here? And often that's an old belief system. That's an old trauma victimization from the past. Maybe you know, we, our voice was suppressed. We couldn't really express ourselves when we were young. We were ignored or not validated. So these parts of ourselves come up in the process. And when we can work with them and we can empower them, then our journey and accessing more of ourselves becomes a lot easier. And, and when we move into meditation, we move into uh, mindfulness. And when we sit in stillness, we open up the channel of our wisdom. We open up you know, just this beautiful funnel of information from the universe. And we become limitless. We become unstoppable. We become uncompromised. We become unwavering. Because we have this beautiful flow of knowledge and wisdom that is ours, that is ourselves. We have a knowing that also boosts our confidence and makes us more resilient and it increases our courage and we become more bold in our decisions and moving forward because we know who we are and we know that we are safe in the world. We also know that we have all this support around us and we also know that we deserve whatever we desire because we have this beautiful connection that where we know, we know that whatever we desire is already there. And then we begin to bring that into the rea into our reality. We begin to bridge that. So when we close those gaps, we begin to access our, our, you know, our field, our wisdom, our gifts that are in our energy, energetic field. And we, be we begin to bring them forth and we begin to manifest them. And we begin to create a new life. We legacy wealth, generational wealth, abundance, prosperity. Yeah, we begin to attract new people into our lives that you know either they bring the best out of us, they they connect us with others, they bring new opportunities, or they simply you know it's a beautiful connection that we didn't have in the past because we weren't open to it or we weren't in the right place for it. We hadn't done that part of our healing, so the world be really begins to change. We. We internally shift ourselves, awaken, heal, integrate, recalibrate, uh, and uh, we move into a new level of beingness. And that new level every day as we up level attracts more and more and more into our life. Well, don't you think sometimes, too, that people don't stay in their body? Absolutely. So if you're Absolutely. not in your body, you can't manifest what it is that you want. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, you know, especially initially when I started doing more consciously my healing work. So when I was young, I was really being led by my guides and my angels. And when I really started being aware of my gifts, then that was one of the things that I noticed that the spirit wasn't in the body. And so the person felt confused, not present. They would make mistakes that, you know, didn't need to, needed to happen. And as part of the work that I do now is helping, first of all, retrieve the spirit, cultivate a good relationship with the spirit, invite the spirit to come into the body and for the individual to be the authority in the body as well. So they have that conscious connection. And then from that place, you know, bringing that into the heart, bringing that connection to the heart space and to the power center from that place, manifesting is very helpful. Yeah. And would you say that, uh, like people should be grounding themselves daily? That would be a really good practice for everyone because we, you know, we, we get up in the morning and our spirit went out and did its spiritual work in the astral plane. And sometimes it's not even back yet when we wake up. <laughs> so grounding, we're calling it back in. You know, we're saying, okay, I'm awake. I have things to do. Let's get going. Come back. So you're asking for parts of you to come back as you're grounding. And you can even intend for your spirit to come back from wherever it is or wherever the you know, the timelines, realms, universes. You said, okay, I'm awake now. I want to be fully present. I want to access all of myself. And I want to create from the highest place possible. So you begin to pull all parts of you, all expressions of you back in. And, and that really supports you in testing and healing your body. Because when your spirit is not in your body, then it can, there's, there's an empty. So often, yeah. as you go about through your day, you the crowd. Your connection oh, is going nice. in and out. Like, I'm it having has, a wee bit of trouble hearing you, Maria. Uh, is it okay now? No, yeah. It's Can you hear me? yeah, it's getting better now. Yeah. You were just kind of like some of your words. We were missing some of your words. The last thing I was saying, when your spirit is not in your body, it's like having a vacancy. And as you go out and about to different places, among different crowds, you give up energetic attachments that weigh you down, that lower your vibration, that create density, that get in the way, that interfere mm. with what you're up to in the day or in your life. So having that powerful connection with your own spirit and continuously cultivating that relationship with self-love, self-acceptance, peace, really allows your spirit to own the body and allows you to be the authority in your body and have that powerful connection with your spirit. Because what I've also uh, seen in some of my clients is when the spirit is not in the body and they don't have a great connection that connection also weakens and the spirit again or the spirit got some or distract and have from wherever it is whether it's trapped somewhere uh, or whether it's just wandering around and that uh, Connection, that conscious connection is there. The spirit knows to come back. Spirit knows that this is where my home is. And that helps me. It helps, uh, it helps your energy, like your energy level. It helps with clarity and it helps you to be open as well. Now, what happens if you're, you lose the connection and you pick something up and you bring it home? <laughs> I also want to check when you when you bring your spirit back and clear the spirit to come back in. And yeah, you're breaking you're breaking up again. It sounds like a connection with the microphone or your headset that's okay, let's see. being disconnected or something. Yeah, it's like your signal's going in and out. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. That's better. It's once you start talking, yeah. I switch. No, that's no, no, that one's actually worse. <laughs> Things happen. Things do happen. Quite often. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, like before the show, my computer okay. shut off twice. I can hear you, Maria. Yeah. So you asked about spirit coming back with attachment. So we want to make sure we close this, we clear the spirit and then we clear the app portal as well so that when the spirit comes in uh, or when it goes out, it is, there is an attach there and then uh, to retrieve the spirit from other realms or lower dimensions. We especially want to clear the spirit before invited to come in and we want to awaken it to its full potential. Now how would you clear a spirit that's not supposed to be with you? So a spirit that is not supposed to be with you uh, there's a couple ways of doing that but w one way of doing that is moving it out of your field. So you're a sovereign being and when you make a request uh, other things that are not in your highest good, heed that request. So if you feel like there's a spirit attached to you, first of all, you want to get into the right place so that you're not doing it from fear or from anger or from misalignment. You by yourself, you want to do it from a place of stillness because from that place is really source working through you, right? So when you notice that there's something attached, find a quiet place, come into the center of the head, come into the heart space, Bring in light, so you're intending, again, to bring in source energy and allowing source energy really to do the work for you. And then as you're looking through your field, you already know it's there, then you, you, know, you bring your attention to it. But if you're just check, kind of checking to see how you're doing, you can go through the layers of your field or you can see yourself like walking around your body or sort of going from the top down. And there's a couple ways you can do that. So you can either you know, see the light that you're bringing in a source come into that area and then like create a bubble around it and then move it. You can ask your guides or your angels to move it. Or you can bring in a rose or a spiritual golden sponge and then allow that to absorb that energy and to move it out of your field. Mm, you are a sovereign being. Yeah. So you can do that in many different ways. Um, you know, now for me, it's just, okay, no, thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. part, not in alignment, not interested. Thank you. Bye. And then but if you, you know, if you're, if you're starting to practice or if it, if, or if you want to sit and just clear your space, you can do that. Uh, sometimes I have the angels also move around my field and just remove everything that's there or I can do the thing with my house. I have to start in the highest top room and then move through the house and cleanse the space and remove fits or anything that's you know that's hanging out that is mm -hmm. not in alignment with the highest good. They so sure are moving are just, around, aren't they? Hmm. <laughs> yes. And the other way the other way that also for me seems very simple like sort of it's done. It's like Clear delete. Clear delete without any attachment to those words. Clear delete. So you say it and it's done versus trying to force it to happen. Just mm -hmm. in that space of clarity, in the space of mindfulness, in that space of stillness, you align with who you are is clear delete. And then you create a blank space or clear space in your field. There so those are go. just some ways you can do that. I think that's good information for everyone. I think so. Yeah. I would say um, whenever I felt anything kind of, it was um, thank you, but no thank you by the law of grace. Oh, like, mm -hmm. that was it. Yeah. Disconnect. But I like that. Clear delete. That's quicker. Yeah. yeah. The, the key is what you said. You know, it's just no attachments. You just say it and it's done. Mm -hmm. Because we're really source. No thank you, source. Thank you. I take it with you. Yep. Done. Yep. Done. Yeah, that's really yep. good advice. Yep. Yeah, because a lot of uh, a lot of people aren't aware of those things that can happen to their energy field, especially when they go out. Well, I don't even think you have to go out in public. They can come and trickle in where you are. But I mean, when people are out crowds and out public and 
working with the public, different things can happen if they don't have their field protected. Wouldn't That's you say? Right. And and like you said, yeah, and like you said, even if you're not leaving your home, because when whatever shows you're watching can open portals and allow entities to come through. Mm-hmm. So if if you know if this show has a lot of ink or a lot of violence, a lot of horror, or the you know in the uh, scare or scary kind of category, or, yeah. sci-fi mm-hmm. category, or they can open portals and there you go. Now you have entities in your house. Mm-hmm. Or even like the kids going to school, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. They can pick up stuff and bring it home. And sometimes I think when it attaches yeah. onto the little ones, they get a little bit goofy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Cranky. Yeah. Yeah. Persnickety. Yeah. It's a good, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The good practice for everyone would be to, you know, just check in for yourself every day. How are you doing? And you, you, you kind of notice when something else is going on, when you start getting angry all of mm-hmm. a sudden mm-hmm. you know, like a wave of sadness or you're just making you know like confusions coming in because so you're making mistakes and you're like what is going on you're losing things um or somebody's really reacting to you in a way that's unreasonable you're like okay let me take let me take a moment and see what's going on in my team or what's going on in the room and then you can do any of those practices that we talked about and then ground yourself again, your spirit back in. And you can teach these these practices to your kids as well. Mm. I think oh. we're coming up on a break, so we're going to take a six-minute break. And we'll be back with more with Maria. Don't go away. Radio at freedomslips.com and we'll be right back after this message. Mountain High Time, two hours of an organization to the madness, discussing the ever-changing dynamics of being both physically and mentally prepared for a plethora of possible outcomes to our future and present. A look into the latest technologies, new scientific discoveries, and how they might be used in connecting the human domain and controlling it, ancient cultures and places. Be warned. This is an opinionated look through headlines. Guests that are not afraid to question the narrative. A little bit of crazy ramblings of a stoner conspiracy factus that pushes constitutional concepts. The place and the time are the same, another dimension called Mountain High Time. Saturdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Mountain High Time. Right here on Revolution.Radio, where information never sleeps and truth breaks the spell. All right. Thanks for listening while we took that short break here at Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com. And now we're going to get back to your host. We're back, and you've been listening to Life in the Hologram on Revolution Radio. And like our man said, don't forget, we're listener-supported. So keep us on the air. It's just like spending a couple of dollars for a cup of coffee, right? Yes. Buy the station a cup of coffee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Instead of buying yourself a cup of coffee, send it to us. Oh, there's many shows on Revolution Radio. I mean, they have absolutely, my there. God, and it, 24 hours. You know, around the clock. Studio A, Studio B, the Hot Nest. I mean, there's something, something going on for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's something always going on over here. That's for sure. Yeah, we got lots of, lots of, lots of information going on. Mm-hmm. Round tables, you know, like um, preppers. There's, there's everything. Ghost stories. There's, there's everything. Yeah, I'm not. Too <laughs> when you were talking about, uh, you know, we could get spirit attachments. 
sometimes when I get onto those ghost shows, you know, where they're <laughs> looking for the ghosts, it's like, nah, I don't think I want to watch this. <laughs> no, no. It really is like about what we are taking in, right? Like um, what we are watching, what we're listening to, you know, like what we're thinking on, like if we're worrying, like it's all, it all affects like everything, right? Their energy. You feel uh oh you're something it's happened with thing. your microphone maria because you're breaking up again can you hear me that's a little better Good. i'm holding it really close <laughs> <laughs> yes. so when we when we you know something is triggered within us especially fear it, it's the same thing when we you know when we ex- amplify our light right we resonate and others can see our light feel our, uh, our light entities can feel the fear and they hook into that fear and you know we, we come we can be a magnet for that touch as well. So, you know, if, if that's our thing, we just want to be aware of that, that whatever your feelings were amplified, we could attach or get attachments from entities that resonate or feed on to or feed off those emotions like fear, anger, uh, hatred. Yeah, because people... I- People really don't understand all the different dimensions that, I mean, we're just sitting in one. Yeah, we're saturated. And we have, you know, several kind of different dimensions going on around us. And good golly, Miss Molly, we could pick up anything. Mm -hmm. Well, And we have dimensional lives, too, don't we, in other dimensions? We do. And, you know, when we access our timelines, we can access other expressions of ourselves. Uh, we can journey, we can we can go travel to other timelines and access innovation, access ourselves, even see ourselves. You know, and especially if it's a part of us that self-actualized, we can get guidance from that part of ourselves. Yeah, it's interesting. It's it certain. is very interesting. Yeah, because a lot of people don't think about those things, that that you have, like, multidimensional lives, and we could be one place and this place and that place, and what if we all met? <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah, but we can put it as resources as well. You know, all the other aspects, expressions of ourselves, living in this planet and other planets, they're resources. They're part of that higher consciousness that we are. We can information through our higher consciousness. And that wisdom could be very helpful to us here on this specific journey that we're on. It could help us heal or it could help. We can bring in some of those special gifts from other timelines other dimensions and manifest them here in the way of service and contribution to others do you think in the last three years uh working with people is it a little more difficult or has it gotten easier it's gotten a lot easier i would say i feel like a lot more people have awoken or awakened to Mm -hmm. realizing that the life that they were living was an illusion and that they have more power than they actually thought they did in the past and that they have also the power they're now exercising and also realizing that a, a way to move forward is to through love, through self-love, self-acceptance, self-forgiveness, and then of that of others forgiving others so as as we realize more and more love you know expressing love to ourselves and embodying love is important we are more easily able to access our own healing and access other parts of ourselves or more of our potential we create more ease around that more ease around accessing upgrading and recalibrating in the past if we look at our how we were brought up we weren't really taught to love ourselves. We didn't come from this is the core. The first thing you need to learn is to love yourself. It was more about following a rule or, or meeting an expectation or fitting into a certain way of being. And that was the way for a very long time. And then when people 
what decided why I want to create success in my life. Their focus one on was on doing and money and prosperity, but we're realizing that now that to have everything that we desire, we have to come back to ourselves. We get to come back to ourselves. We get to know ourselves because everything that we want outside, like you know, the, the material possession, the joy and the happiness is within us. It's available and accessible within us. And more and more people are coming to that realization and then coming back to that place of I start with me. I am the cent- I am the center of my universe. I am the creator of my life. I des- I am designing my new life. And in that choice, it becomes a leader in facilitating for them as well as them healing and transforming. In a- well, that's good. It's amazing. You know, like it is because, you know, there is like, a, there is a process that we can all like kind of engage in that is um, where we find ourselves. There is a million and 20 things that will want to take your attention and pull you out of yourself and yet the work that we actually the work that is actually the most rewarding is the work that we do inside ourselves it's the work Mm -hmm. that that's the work you know like there's no there's no avoiding it there's no getting away from it like Mm -hmm. you know the work was um and me you know, because I was I was creating like a like a vacuum myself by giving. Mm-hmm. So time to fill that vacuum. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we can create imbalance anywhere mm-hmm. if we overgive, if we undergive, if you know, and it, and it comes from the the things that we feel are missing within us. Mm-hmm. So when we can come back to that place know ourselves give to ourselves what we truly need and want and desire then everything else falls into play Um, i was recently asked i was running a class and we were talking about manifestation and Mm -hmm. the the question that i posed to the group was why don't you have what you desire Mm -hmm. in, in this moment what's in the way and the answer is me right for the we are in our way we are the ones that our inner way of having. If we don't have the life that we desire, it's not everybody outside us. It's not the environment. It's us, mm-hmm. because there's a belief system that we're playing out that is not allowing us to have that. It's you know we're on a path, and what we want is in a different time. And unless we change within ourselves, and we write that belief system, and we create a new new awareness. In a, a new structure within ourselves, then we're st- we're going to stay on the same path. We're on. If we if we are not able to receive, that we're not going to have what we desire. Mm-hmm. If we're not able to love ourselves, we're not going to have what we desire. If we're not able to forgive ourselves or accept ourselves as we are, or if we're focused on what we don't have, unlocking scarcity, then we're not going to have what we desire. So it's we. Are in our way, and, mm-hmm. and it's, it's without judgment, right? It's just a mm-hmm. realization. Yeah. So when we can look at ourselves that way, then we can bring in kindness and compassion, and we can begin to unravel that, and we can create more ease around that, and we can open up for more joy in our life, more accepting, more receiving, more feeling the abundance that's already within us, instead of uh, you know trying to reach for it outside us and then we begin to get out of our own way but don't you think like <clears throat> some of the light workers or s- spiritual workers at some point in time took some kind of vow of poverty from you know way back and that kind of filtrates into this lifetime and somehow you have to get rid of that Oh, the vow of poverty that you took. <laughs> right. So I, I, I do agree that many mm-hmm. of the light workers did choose that. So we go back to the question, why don't we have what we desire? Well, we chose that, right? 
So we're in our own way. So we get to unravel that. So we get to look at what the now and then everything else around us, which is our past lives, contracts, soul agreements, Mm -hmm. karmic agreements, karmic contracts. Get to look at all of that. And we get to release all of that. We get to heal all of that. We get to move all of that into the place of we can have it all. Because the reason we don't is because we have that, right? We agree to that. And we're still on to that. But once we recognize that it's there, we can simply say thank you and send love to that and ask for that wisdom for that timeline. And we can up level that timeline and then integrate and release the cords that are connected to this lifetime. Well, now how long does that take? Oh, it could be, you know, it could be instantly. <laughs> yeah. But if we have several lifetimes years. like that. <laughs> no, it doesn't necessarily take that long. Uh, are you but sure? there is a, you know, <laughs> you know, what I, what I ask people is that what's the decision that you're now making? What is that powerful decision? So, multi dimensional So, we're making conscious choices, the mind. We're making emotional choices in our, into our alignment. Then we're also activating our connection with our spirit that has all this ancient wisdom. Of course, the soul that's connected to the physical body. So, in our work, we're activating ourselves and activating the consciousness, the intelligence at, at, at all levels who we are. And we're aligning all of that into the now as we continue to make a powerful decision of what we truly desire, of having and receiving and allowing and, and allowing ourselves to instantly manifest and to embody our worth and our value and to live into abundant joy and happiness. So we're activating and we're bringing all parts of us into alignment. So the more we do it and the more intentional we are with it and the more we lean into it, we are from the soul contracts, karmic contracts, and agreements. We're healing our physical body. We're healing our emotional body from the trauma. So we're doing, we're working at different layers of who we are as we continue to make that powerful choice. And as we continue to say yes, yes, yes to abundance and prosperity. Yes, 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 I am. I, I am universal wealth. I am universal abundance. I am universal love. I am universal light. I am, I am, I am. I am source, you, you know, source abundance. You know, the abundance with me is source. The abundance within me is universe. And then we begin to lean that into that, but we also get to believe that. So if we don't believe it, we get to say it over and over again. And we get to live into the new vision of what that is when we truly believe it. And then that again, creates a chemical reaction that we have neuroplasticity happening and we're becoming a different person as well. Somebody needs a magic wand. (laughs) (laughs) That would be very helpful too. (laughs) Well, you know, when I was reading off your bio, Maria, you have um, light language. You're a light language channel. Could you tell me more about that? Yeah, light language is uh, my voice that it's either comes in as an activation or a clearing, depending on what we're doing uh, with the group or the individual. Uh, and it comes in at different times. It may come in um, if we're doing upgrading the DNA and helping the individual. It's like a quantum leap. If they're mm-hmm. doing a quantum leap, it may come in as a quantum leap. We support their quantum leap. Um, it may come in if there are entities that are generational or ancestral, that they've been with the person for a very long time, it may come in at different times. And it sounds different uh, every mm-hmm. time it comes in, but mm-hmm. it's, it always gets it's translated because it comes in and then hear the sound of the frequency. And then I, you know, as it's coming in, I'm sharing it with whoever I'm working with. And mm-hmm. I'm also sharing what they're doing. So that the intention behind the light language. Uh, mm-hmm. And sometimes it translates directly into words. So I've translated it into words for the end. It's very beautiful. It's very powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It just, uh, it just creates a different space. Um, sometimes it's very feminine. So it brings this kind of beautiful God energy. And, um, and sometimes it's very masculine. It's again, it's really what, what the intention for what we're working on that it comes with a very powerful, like, like a 
it's like a tuning fork that comes in and recalibrates everything and clears the space and and allows for the quantum leap and allows for the new alignment to happen and a new space to be created. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also for the healing to be integrated at a faster level. Yeah, that's, I think, the key. Getting it done quickly. The yeah, person and also what's beautiful. Move forward. I just wanted to add that sometimes it comes directly from source and sometimes it comes from other beings like the Pleiadians or the Arcturians or other beautiful powerful beings of light that Mm -hmm. are are supporting the individual that I'm working with. So that's why it has different tones and it's a little different um, in the words or rearranged in the words or the sounds as it comes in. Um, But it's when it comes through, what I hear from whoever I'm working with is that they felt like being uplifted or they feel like a surge of energy moving through their body. Or they felt like angelic wings that came in and lifted them up. Or that they saw beautiful light around them that felt very supportive and very loving and very kind. Uh, that they, you know, they were trying, they were following the process and felt like they were kind of stuck in, in that. Sometimes we're, we're following the guidance and there's a part of us that resists. So when light language comes in, it's, it closes that up, it collapses, and it integrates whatever's there and then allows it to communicate it with. So in other words, it's kind of speaking in tongues, but speaking in light language. Yeah, I guess that's another way of describing it. Well, I guess a lot of different people have, a, you know, some people do sound frequencies and, you know, maybe that's part of the light language. You yeah, know, they sometimes do like, toning or you know different sounds yes and sometimes it may come in like as just a sound a tone that is very expensive so sometimes they start with a very low tone and it gets into a high pitched tone but as it's very it's expanding the field and clearing the field as it's coming in and you feel it like you can feel the expansion of your body and your field as the sound is moving and expanding uh, and it almost feels like a, a chamber, like when when the sound, when the healing, when the light language comes in, it almost feels like being in your own healing chamber. And you know, it's very specific to you, and you're experiencing, you're having your own experience. So, in other words, like maybe this is what I'm understanding. Like you work with a lot of ET energies. Uh, so I, I work with source energy and divine being energy mm-hmm. and come in see there are these sort of beings of light of mm-hmm. highest and purest light that right. are here to support humanity and they come in to support um but um you know i consider myself more as a channel mm-hmm. as i was describing earlier in front of a group or in front of a client it's what is in the highest good is what comes through and that's, we just kind of followed up. Did you ever get a client that was resistant to your help, even though they contacted you for help? Uh, well, I ha- I've, I've had clients in the past where they want to direct the process. Where they, they, you know, they, they have an agenda and they sort of come with the list of things that they into responsibility and creation and allowing the healing to take place and moving into your awareness and moving into awakening and, and you in your own connection. So I'm a facilitator. I'm not here to fix anyone because of this to fix, you know, mm-hmm. what's going on is part of the journey that we're on. Um, so I've had a couple of clients like that. And so we just reframe the conversation and then, then we move into responsibility and embracing. Cause sometimes when they come in, they want to, guide the process or control the process they're only willing to see certain things instead of what's the big picture what is this about what else is going on so we, we go back to that place um and then i had i did have one other person that when light language came in she just said um what is that you know it's, I, it's new to me I, how do i relate to that so she wasn't assisting well, I guess it's, if it's, you know, I think not it's, familiar to them, they would be 
apprehensive as to what's going on. Yeah, and you can explain to people what could happen. Yeah, anything can happen, right? Right. Right. (laughs) I just say, just stay open. It's going to be magical. Just set the intention that you're going to receive exactly what you're you're ready for. Mm. Magic is going to happen. You know, when you talk about the light language, I was thinking about, like, um, you seen those like those experiments where they do the sound like with the sand and it vibrates it and you get all these beautiful like um geometric patterns. Like yeah. I wonder, you know, I wonder yeah. because I even saw like I saw like a study that was studying blood and it was also changing um its shape and it had to do with like vibration and it was mm. showing you yeah, it's really there's a still a lot i think there's a lot that has been done in that field but i think further well it's like absolutely because your body's made up of mostly water Mm -hmm. and the frequencies uh rearrange you know the water (laughs) yeah yeah into a good place because i take my vistronic things and i put my headphone on my water jug and my frequencies go into the water, mm-hmm. you know, like uh, Ivo when he worked with the water. Oh and yeah, got all the yep. different things. Yep, the love frequency. Yep, yeah, right. joy, harmony. Yep, yeah, it all ties in, doesn't it? I it does. Say. What do you say, yes. Maria? And absolutely. And when we're working with light language, you know, light language is not the sound. So a lot of times it comes in in color, hmm. or as as n- numbers, or as an actual shapes like sacred geometry. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I, you know, sometimes if I can capture the sticky geometry, I'll draw it out for the client or the numbers. I'll write out the numbers and I'll repeat the numbers for them. So it it does come in the sound, but in addition to the sound, then these are other layers that they can mm-hmm. relate to with there's the, the imaging, of, the imagery of the sacred geometry or the actual numbers that they can definitely relate to. And oftentimes they write them out and then they carry them with them um, to further image. So that's good. Yeah. And it's all related. So it's a multi-dimensional language. It's yeah. all all areas. I like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would, yeah, I would say it has a lot of facets to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, or, or it, whatever our imagination can imagine as well, as we're in that field and we're allowing our, ourselves just to see whatever is available to us. And then part of that, Part of what we see is what we're familiar with, or part of what comes through, or things that we may relate to. So that we may, it may be numbers or colors mm-hmm. uh, or symbols. Well, here's the deal, Caroline. We have to get our frequency up so high that we disappear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, when we, we are... can disappear and reappear. <laughs> that, yeah, get your frequency up. <laughs> to a level where um, everything's just flowing, right? Everything's just flowing and you don't really have to think about it anymore. You know, you just trust. You just go for it. Just go. Yeah. That'd be nice, wouldn't yeah. it? We could walk through walls. <laughs> <laughs> teleport. Teleport. Yeah. See, I like that. Okay. I really like that. I like the teleportation. I've always had a fascination with that. I used to watch a show. We're already doing it at the spirit level. We are. We are. That's for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just, just going right way in the physical. It at the physical level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we do it a level. lot in the dream state. I, well, you were talking we about how you were like, people are not really staying in their bodies. People are doing it constantly. Mm-hmm. 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 Maybe that's why things disappear. <laughs> <laughs> they disappear and reappear. <laughs> <laughs> They're not in the place that you believe you left it. <laughs> Here, here's what I'm going to tell you what happened last night. I put three little pictures. It was a great grandkids' picture. My daughter in law wanted them because she's a grandmother. She was putting them in a thing. And I set them down. I was putting them on the stairs. On the stairs. And I, you know, put them in for the like the spindles are, you know, for the railing. And they fell. 
So I, oh, I'm not going to get them tonight. It's like 11 o'clock. I'll get it tomorrow. So I go to look for these pictures. I can only find two. Hmm. Not three, but two. One vanished. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Time slip. You have a wormhole there. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, there's a wormhole in my bedroom somewhere, too, because things disappear. <laughs> like I, no, I think uh, last week I was looking for the TV remote. I crawled around the floor, looked all over the place. <laughs> where is this thing? I know where I lay it. I put it right there. It was gone. So luckily I had another one. So I like reprogrammed. Program the other one, and then I, I looked in my bed, and there it was. It's like, what? <laughs> Where did it come from? Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> Jump have, timelines. Yep. You have no idea. It this stuff just disappears. I was opening a little package the one time, and it had like a SIM card in it, mm -hmm. and it flew, and it flew. And it might be still flying because it never did. <laughs> oh, my <goodness. laughs> Yeah. So, don't you also like have little happen. gnomes around you playing tricks. <laughs> I mean, this happens all the time. <laughs> it's crazy. Wow. I, I just, I. You know, it baffles me. You've got it's, mischievous energy there. I'll tell you. It's mm -hmm. like, how about letting, you know, like a couple thousand dollars appear? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If they yeah, want to be mischievous. For that. Yeah. Or, or tell some them. gold. <laughs> yeah. Tell them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how about delivering some gold coins? <laughs> Large denominations. <laughs> well, we should be able to materialize that, huh? Well, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Who was it? Um, the Maharisha. What was his name? The one that the Beatles, like, um, they used to visit. I think they just called him Maharishi, didn't they? Was it Maharishi? Yeah. And supposedly he materialized like gems out of the oh. air. Yeah. I don't that know. was Sai Baba, I think. Was that Sai Baba? But there was a couple of them. It wasn't just one of them that was able to do it. Well, there's like those people that do that, a port. It's called a porting, I think. A-P-O-R-T. Because mm -hmm. this uh, man that comes on the show every now and again, he does that. He's out of Seattle. Well, he was in Seattle, but I think he moved. But he brings different kind of gems through and those people that do that trumpeting did you ever see that maria when they're blowing these trumpets in the dark and then different things come out like rings or stones oh no i haven't seen that really no i've never seen it in my life. I, I, really mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, have seen, I have seen people manifest things like that yeah, but not what you're describing of the trumpeting. But I, I have seen both on the negative side and on the, you know, on the really positive side. Right. They call it a, a porting. They go in like a room, a different room. And the, my my friend Reverend Debbie was doing the the Trump thing, and you know, different things have come through. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it is. That would be a really good skill for everyone to have. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get your horn, go into your closet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I love your laughter. <laughs> yep. And see what comes out. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I have enough breath to blow a horn. <laughs> well, I think you would. I think you would if you were materializing diamonds, rubies. <laughs> That'd be nice. Oh, we're being funny. We are being funny. <laughs> Humor is always good. Yeah, but it, anything is possible, right? If you can materialize one thing, you can materialize another. That's if it. You, you know, everything is 
possible with intention. Everything's possible in the right alignment. Everything's possible with the right state of being framework. I like that. Yeah. Well, there's whole things that they have these laughing monks, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's also the woman, um, I think they call her mother, the Indian woman. She just gives people hugs. Like, she just oh, yeah, holds yeah. them. I have a friend that, like, she loves her. Like, if she yeah. comes to New York, she's right there. Yep. Lining up for her mm -hmm. hug. I have a, <laughs> I have a couple of people I know that are their, her devotees. Mm hmm. I forget That's... what her name is. I forget to you. It will come back to me. But there are there are beautiful people in the world, you know, that are just here, you know. They're here for for others. And some of us don't even know why we're here. <laughs> 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 and how we got here. <laughs> and that's part of the journey. <laughs> yeah. That is. Discovery. Remembering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of people that got to do a lot of work, aren't there? Mm -hmm. That's part of our karmic agreement and soul agreement. But we can also condense that work as well. Fast track. It yep. can be condensed. Yes, mm -hmm. we can fast track that. Okay. Yeah, or, okay. or change the relationship with it. Mm -hmm. We have to start at birth. <laughs> Well, I think we are, we are, we are, the, um, like, there's some factions that seem to be, like, progressing quicker, and then there's others that are, I think there's just, it's right across the gamut here, you know, like, but there are a lot of people that are keeping their eyes open, you know, and their, mm -hmm. their attention is on something else other than what they're be being fed. You know, they're they're questioning, which is good because it's good to, good for us all. And starting really early is you know wonderful. Mm -hmm. it, it especially with the new star seats that are coming in, the new beings that are coming in. In it, if they if they're helped, uh, if if you know, transformation is facilitated, awakening is facilitated really on, then they can fast track stepping into their gifts. Uh, especially during those ages of in, where we pick up that trauma, where we take on, which is, you know, zero to 10. If we go back or if there's guidance during those ages, then we're not having to go back at 40 years old, 50 years old, 60 years old to heal that aspect of ourselves. Mm -hmm. We've avoided all these side tracks, side roads on our path. And then they can really step into why they're here continue to help earth and the ascension yeah i hope we can help the earth that's for sure because there's a factor that doesn't want to help it mm -hmm. unfortunately yeah and we can all do our part i think we can all do our part though you know as we shift ourselves we're changing the frequency that we're holding the frequency that we're anchoring into the earth so each one of us is significant in that way and we're essential in that way that as we embody more light, we're anchoring more light into Earth. And we're creating a ripple effect around us. So others are awakening. Others have feel inspired, more desire to also awaken their own light. So we create these little ripple effects. And especially as we continue to bring in higher frequencies to help Mother Earth. So we can all do our part um, in the best way that we can. Yeah, that's for sure. Picture a white light bubble around the earth every day. Mm -hmm. And then green. around yourself. Yeah. And then around ourselves as we go into the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as we go to yeah. sleep. Wouldn't you say yeah. we should do some protection mm -hmm. before we go to sleep at night? Yeah, that would be good too. We, you know, we could expand when, when we create the bubble of light earth, we can also send loving kindness and compassion. Uh, it's like a pulsating light energy that moves through Earth, through different layers, and then allow it to be so, and and allow it to amplify. And then we can do the same within ourselves. When we go to sleep, 
first of all, clear ourselves of anything that we picked up for the day, call back our spirit uh, as we settle into our, you know, into our day at the end of the day, even reflect on gratitude or joy or abundance or appreciation of life. And then as we're doing that, see that golden light around us and see it creating a beautiful bubble around our field. And it just feels, it feels like we're creating a beautiful space, a beautiful chamber where we can rest and rejuvenate as we sleep with the intention of having deep breath and even having the intention of continuing to manifest during our sleep time. Whatever we, what it, whatever it is that we're up to, you know, bringing more of our vision forward, more of our desires forward, and then the intention that we would wake, we will wake up fully alert, fully present, fully embodied, fully aligned. There we go. Yeah, that's great. No, it all really we have is. To do just... is remember all of this thing. Oh, right, that's things. what I was just about to say. Yeah, because that, you know, I do write things down and I stick it up, like on the mirror in the bathroom, like, like little things to remind myself. Because we get busy, you know, we get busy before we know it, you know, we're we're out of our bodies again, like on automatic pilot. Yeah, something triggers us mm-hmm. our first time to our body, and when we can, when we recognize that we can bring ourselves back. Yeah. But sometimes if we don't have a way of doing that. So one way we can do that is we can set an alarm. I, I like to set the alarm mm-hmm. at the angel number. So one one, eleven eleven, ten oh, ten, yeah. mm-hmm. eight eight, uh, three three three. So my alarm goes off at different times throughout the day and first of all it's reminded me to connect mm-hmm. to be in that joy, freedom and sovereignty. Uh, and when we do that, we're shifting ourselves back into that. So whatever triggered us through our day or whatever is happening that is taking us out of our body, in that moment, we're coming back to that. It feels more natural because it has. we also have this connection, the angelic connection, uh, the spiritual connection of those numbers. Mm-hmm. So it's like an automatic reset. Oh, there's my reset. Okay, let me just take a moment to do that. I'm that resetting happens, back and that happens to me all day long. One one one, two two two, three three three, four four four, five five five. Mm-hmm. And in the night. One one one, yeah. three three three, four four four. <laughs> yeah, that's how your angels communicating with you, the universe communicating with you. You can you just have a lot to say. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You can but what you can do is just just take a moment when you see the number and say, Okay. I'm ready to listen. What do you have to say today? Or, or what's the message for me today? And then have your pen and paper ready so that you can write that down. Sometimes uh-huh. the message come in as pieces. And they don't always come in all at once. And especially since you're getting different, you know, throughout the day. It's you every day. Take the moment to, yeah, so just take a moment to do that. Yeah, I'd better. Every, yeah, that's right. Get you to take every every day, every day. There's not a day that it doesn't have a day or a night. That's right. Sometimes get your attention, it, Madeline. I think so. I think <laughs> so. Yeah. Yep. Obviously. Mm-hmm. I know what they want to see. <laughs> <laughs> they should have said, "Grab a pencil and paper." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's every yeah. day, Maria. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it sounds like it's about your gifts, your gifts, more gifts that want to come through. Mm. Uh, and it also feels like a solution to some of the things that you've been asking about. They're, they're wanting to support you, your angels, your guides, the universe wants to support you. So they they have the solution. They have the answer. They want to show you. Yeah, it's funny. I was sitting here. I don't know how long ago it was. Maybe three years. And I hear, go get those angels cards. I'm like, what? I I didn't pay attention. So next day, go get those angel cards. No, oh, still didn't pay attention. 
<laughs> stubborn. <laughs> Go get those angel cards. It's like, okay, okay. <laughs> I've only I only had it for like ten years. <laughs> I says that I got him. I said, now what do you want me to do? Send these cards out. Don't say anything. Just send them out to people. Okay. So I've been doing that for the last three years. Mm. Wow. Yeah. You're listening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm listening. <laughs> And I got all kinds of cards. <laughs> <laughs> I even made my own. You were talking about I am. I made a mm -hmm. lot of I am cards. I take pictures of angels. I mean, clouds. Oh, beautiful. I probably have that. I have thousands of pictures of clouds. Mm. Oh, beautiful. What a beautiful thousands. connection you have. <laughs> wow. You called them angels. Yeah, at first I call them angels, but the clouds. clouds. Maybe but that's because I'm looking for an angel in the clouds. Mm -hmm. You are the angel. Mm -hmm. Okay. An earth angel. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I like to take cloud pictures, and then I do, I uh, edit them into. Like I mirror them, mm -hmm. and then they get real interesting. It's I love interesting. it. Yeah, I love it. You should do a calendar. Yeah, calendar yep. or another set of cards or a book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep saying it to you. Yeah, there's a message. We will we'll keep saying it to you, and you'll keep going. <laughs> okay, and then you'll go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I like clouds. Don't you like clouds? I do. Yeah. I do. There's always something to see in, in the sky, I think. Oh, yeah. There is. Uh, yeah, there is. Yeah. And if they're not plummeting us with chemtrails, but there's certainly a lot of things to see in the sky. There is. Just keep looking yeah. up. Sorry, what was that, Maria? That messages come through, through mm -hmm. the sky, the clouds nature uh sometimes it's exactly what you need when you step out of your home and you look up and you feel the wind or you hear the wind or you see the clouds or you see the beautiful sky you know, you, you're filled with that message but then you hope of possibility i i love to i love to go just outside mm -hmm. and stand outside with my eyes closed and my arms wide open and i just receive receive the warmth of the sun and the light of the sun nurturing my field and my multidimensional bodies. And I listen for the wind and the sound of the birds. And I look up and see what's there and just, you know, and when I look up, it's like I'm looking beyond the sky as well mm -hmm. for whatever's available in that moment, whatever message seems to come through. So it's a nice grounding practice, but it's also a great practice of inspiration. So, I get a lot of inspiration this way as well. Come mm. in that moment, and whatever the universe wants to download in that moment, I'm ready to receive it. And as I'm getting grounded, connecting to myself, to nature, to the universe, and then open to receive, and it's, it feels really, really good. Oh yeah. Um, but I do in between my breaks, <laughs> I'll go outside and just enjoy being there in that moment. We'll go out on a full moon with an empty pocketbook and say, fill it up, fill it up, <laughs> fill it up. Thank you. <laughs> Maria, let the listeners know how they can reach you, how they can find you. Thank you. You can reach me at 360 Prosperity, my website. You can sign up to get a free meditation. It's a very powerful meditation that helps you connect to spirit, to your higher self, and embody more of your light so you feel more grounded more inspired every day, more in your flow. So that's a beautiful gift when you opt in um, to receive more information uh, or connect with me. You can also uh, set up a session through my website, through work with me. I do have a complimentary session for anybody that really doesn't know which direction they want to go or doesn't have clarity on what's next. 
I have a complimentary uh, session available that you can uh, you can sign in for, and then we can see what's next for you. We can support you in that. I also have my YouTube channel, uh, Maria Martinez, 360 Prosperity, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, or you can simply email me at maria at acceleratedabundance.com, E-X-C-E-L-L-E-R-A-T-E-D-A-B-U-N-D-A-N-C.com. And I'm happy to connect with you. Thank there you. There you go, listeners. Yeah. And what's that website again? 360prosperity.com. There you go. 360prosperity.com. That's a great name. Yeah. Give Maria a jingle. Or check out the website and see mm-hmm. all that she does. Yeah, this has been this has been very nice. This is Yeah, we learn something new all the time. All the time. <laughs> I like you I like your approach, I do. I like your um I like your energy. Oh, thank you. You both of you have beautiful, joyful energy. Thank oh. you. Thank you. Thank you. I hear the music. Do you? Yeah, I think yeah, <laughs> I do. <laughs> it's sticking in. Okay. Well, it's nice to have you on, and everybody, thanks for listening to Life in the Hologram. Come back next week for another great show. Bye. Thank you, Maria. Bye. Thank you. Thank have you. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.